In this follow-on video from the last video in the playlist, I continue to look at Python namespaces. The last slide of the previous video considered the following. It showed a computer program that had these three program statements, and I've just added this additional program statement here. For this program, Python will organize its namespace using a dictionary. If we consider the first line, number underscore one is assigned five, this will result in an entry in the dictionary which we can show schematically here. And we know we have the variable name, and this is an instance of the integer class that contains the value of five. If we look to this program statement, it will generate an entry in the dictionary as shown shown here and this program statement we know will enter into the dictionary as shown here. Now if we consider the dictionary what we will remember is that this column is the keys for the dictionary and this holds the values. So this key here is referencing this instance that has this value. Now when we talk about a dictionary we know we usually talk about keys to values but when we talk about a namespace we usually use a slightly different terminology. We refer to names and objects. So this dictionary here is actually got in this column the names and these are the names of the variables variables here and of course these names are actually bound to the instances of the classes that are shown in this column and of course instances of classes are objects so if I wanted to get at this value I go via this name this value here I go via this name and if you look at the objects you can see this one is an instance of the integer class this one is an instance of the float class and this one here is an instance of the string class. When you're writing a computer program to implement some solution, some algorithm, it's often useful to remind yourself as the programmer as to the names that exist in the code that you're currently writing. In other words, looking at the namespace for the area of the code that you're currently working on. Now this can be achieved using this line here, where we print what this returns. Now this function here, if you have a look in the brackets, takes no Thing in. It is normal to pass something into here if you wanted, for instance, to know what the attributes of a class were, what the data attributes and what the method attributes were. But when you see this function without anything in the brackets here, when there is no argument given, it returns the list of the names in the current local scope. So what this program statement should do for us is to return these names. It doesn't return this line. It doesn't tell us the values, it doesn't tell us the objects, it just gives us the list of names that exist for the namespace of this computer program. So let's run this computer program and see what we get. Well, this is the output from the computer program. Now, what we are looking at here is the namespace for this computer program. And if you look to this part of the namespace, you can see we have my underscore string, which appears here in the computer program. We have number underscore one which appears here and we have number underscore two which appears here so we have got output here what we were expecting however what are this lot what are these there for why are these part of the namespace well to help answer that question what I'm going to do I'm going to remove these three program statements from the program and the listing we will then have is shown here we simply have this one program statement that will print what the dir function returns and if we see the runtime for this what we will get is what you can see here and if you look at the output you can see it's the same output as what we had here without these three now why have these three disappeared well because they no longer are part of this program they did exist here as you can see but in this program they don't exist because i've deleted them so a reasonable question to ask is where have these come from? What are they for? Well, the answer is Python includes these in all of the code that you produce. It puts these into the namespace. Now, this video is not going to be looking at what each of these do. I'm just going to select a couple of them. I'm going to have a look at this 
name and I'm going to have a look at this name here and how they can be used and what they're for. And the other names that you see here, well, we'll cover that some other time in the playlist. Let's turn our attention to this computer program and look at the first line here. And we can see we have three quotes here and three quotes here and in the middle it says this is a doc string to demo its use now a computer programmer would typically put in here something that describes what the code is doing so another programmer can come along and have an idea of what the code's about and you would typically see these at the heading of a class to inform another computer programmer what the class is going to do and they can easily get at the doc string they can also appear in functions and then we have these program statements now this program statement here is going to print the namespace and this one is going to print what this gets at and we'll see what it does in a moment and then this this line where well, we're going to see what that one does as well now the program you're looking at I have saved on my computer under the following name my demo dot py let's now consider the runtime for this computer program which we can see here now this line is responsible for this output and we can see that this output is the namespace of the program we're looking at this well that simply prints a space here and when we come on to this line we can see that we're printing this and if we look here you can see that's the doc string that has appeared here because if you read this it says this is a doc string to demo its use and clearly that's the string that I placed here now this program statement clearly puts in this line space here and this one well it outputs this and if we have a look at this we can see at the end that it says my demo dot py which is the name of the file that I pointed out here for this program when I saved it to my computer and all of this well that's the absolute path to that file name and you'll notice here I just put some dotted lines saying the rest of the path would go here because the path is rather long and I wanted to get it all on the slide so what in fact this allows us access to is the absolute path of where this program is saved on the computer and obviously if you look at the path name you can see that I've saved it on a Windows machine clearly if this was on a Unix machine it would look slightly different the path but what we can see is that this is the name of the file and we would use Python if we wanted to get at that name and we can see it comes at the end of of this path so let's not lose sight that this video is about namespaces and what they are and what I've done here I've just showed two examples of the names that Python places in the namespace ie this one and this one here now the others that appear in this namespace I'm not going to cover here they are useful but as I said this is about namespaces and these are the names that we get whether we like it or not as programmers they appear when we look at the namespace for a python program that we would write and of course all of the variables we use will appear in the namespace but this program here i've put no variables in because it's not implementing any algorithm we will now consider this computer program and you can see that we have these three program statements which we've seen before and here you can see we're printing the namespace for this computer program and if you look you can see here there are two definitions of functions and if we look to this one you can see that the function name is x f and inside it we have pass and that's just a placeholder for where we will eventually put some code this one well the name of this function is af and again i've simply put pass in there and i would fill out what this function was going to do with program code that would implement some algorithm as and when i felt it was necessary as i was developing my code now when we run this computer program what we're going to get is the following now I'm going to ignore the ones that Python always puts into the namespace and I'm going to concentrate on these here which are in the namespace as a direct result of the code that I've put in the program. And if you look here you can see that the name is AF and that's clearly the name of this function. If we look here I've got my underscore string which is appearing in the code here. This is number underscore one which appears here in the code. This is number underscore two which appears here. And this this xf is the name of this function here. 
Now we have already seen that dictionaries are used for setting up namespaces in Python. Now what we are seeing here are the names that appear in the dictionary for this computer program. Now this function, when you don't give it any arguments, will return the names that appear in the dictionary for this computer program. And the names I'm interested in at the moment are these here. And you can see they are the names that I have been responsible for typing into the computer program here. For example, look at this one, number underscore one. You can see that appears here in the computer program. Now this function only gives me the names. It doesn't give me the values. So for example, if I go back to this one again number underscore one I do not know what value is attached to that I would have to look at the code to find that out but what I do get here is a list of the names that will appear in the namespace and this is useful for me as a programmer because if I find myself getting name conflicts I can say well I better have a look at what the namespace is for the code I'm writing so I would use this line here to tell me what the namespace is for the code which will help me solve problems that have name conflicts and a name conflict is where you accidentally if you like come along give an object the same name when you didn't intend to I would also like to point out the following if we consider this function here we know it's going to return us the names that appear in this computer program and we know that the names will appear in a dictionary which is usually keys to values that's how we talk about dictionaries when we talk about a namespace as I've already mentioned we usually talk about names to objects so when I concentrate on these five names here which appear in the program and these are the names I was responsible for typing in you can see here that I have a name AF which is the name of this function now that's because you will often heard it said in Python that everything is an object so this is still a name to an object mapping even though the object in this case is a function and if you come over here you can see that this is the name that's mapped to this function but it is still a name to object mapping and all five of these are names to objects this name happens to be mapped to an integer object this one happens to be mapped to a float object and this one happens to be mapped to a string object and these two well they're mapped to a function which is treated as an object by Python now even if you don't like that idea you have to bear in mind that namespaces are names to objects and as we've said already Python treats everything as an object and here's an illustration of that very fact so if I was to see AF here I wouldn't know whether that in fact was an integer object a float object or indeed as it appears in this program a function which is an object something else worth pointing out before I finish this video is have a look at these names here and you can see that in alphabetical order which is often very useful for us as programmers because we can easily locate them in the namespace when we use this function here check out the supporting website for these videos in addition why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video